we are going to be doing periodontal probing using Dentrix software and pulling up the patient's chart. We see we have Jane Doe. And because in the patient's chart, not the perio chart, their regular charting, we already have marked their missing teeth, which is 1, 16, 17, 32, as well as 20, 29, and 30, as marked by the M's indicated there. So when you start entering your probing depth numbers that the doctor or hygienist is calling out to you, the computer will skip over the missing teeth. So as you can see here, we're on the facial of number two, and then with our three probe readings per tooth on the facial and three probe readings per tooth on the lingual, the computer will automatically advance to the next pocket depth once you enter it. So we're gonna be starting on the facial distal of number two, as you can see by the yellow highlight. So I'm just gonna be entering the numbers, which is PD is our pocket depth. It tells me what tooth we're on, and it tells me where we are located. So I can use this keyboard to enter in my probing depths, or I can use the keyboard on the computer. So if you'll just follow along, keeping in mind that there are six pocket depths per tooth, three on the facial aspect of the tooth and three on the lingual aspect of the tooth, but the computer will go through it for you. So we're gonna start with number two. So that has a four, three, four, four, two, seven, four, two, four, three, two, three. Now we're on the distal facial of number six, two, one, two, two, one, two, two, one, two, two, one, two. Now we're on number 10. Three, two, three, 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 three, two, five. And you can see any pocket depths that are four millimeters and above indicates bone loss and the computer automatically marks them in red. If you're doing this on charting with a paper, you would be using a red and a blue or a red and a black pencil or pen to mark anything above four in red. So again, I'm just gonna keep going along. The computer automatically is now gonna go to number 15 on the lingual aspect and the distal. So that's three, two, three, three, two, three, three, two, three, three, two, three. Now we're on number 11, two, one, two, 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 three, two, three, three, two, three, three, two, four, five, two, four, and number two is six, two, three. So now we've completed the entire probings for all of the maxillary teeth. And easily you can see that anything that has some bone loss is marked in red. So it jumps out at you that there's an issue. As you can see, it didn't even ask me to put in anything for one in 16 because on that patient's chart, it was already pre previously marked out. 
Some offices will have you do additional readings, which is SUP stands for like um, pus that could come out of an infected tooth. BLD is bleeding upon probing your gingival margin. So there's a bunch of other numbers that they could have you note, but typically it's just the probing depths and maybe bleeding or mobility. If the tooth is mobile and moves around, you would click on the tooth number and mark that it's mobile. So now that we've finished all six probe readings on the facial and the lingual, of the maxillary teeth, we're gonna drop down and do the same thing on the mandibular teeth. Keep in mind where the M is as the tooth is missing. So the yellow tab will not even show up and it'll skip right over it. Because when the doctor or hygienist are calling out the numbers of the probe readings, they're just gonna keep going straight along the teeth. So right now we're gonna hit next. So as you can see, we are down here on number 31 on the facial distal. And that is three, two, three. Three two, three, and you see how it skipped over because those teeth are missing. So the doctor or hygienist is not gonna probe teeth that aren't there. So you already are pre-charting that those teeth are missing. So it skips right over it. So now I am on number 27. Three, two, three, two, one, two, two, one, two, two, one, two. And as the assistant charting, just to make sure you're on the right tooth number, you might say, okay, we're on number 23. And they'll say, yes, two, one, two, two, one, two, three, two, one, two, three, two, three, six, four, and you see, again, this one was missing, so it skipped right over it. And anything above four millimeters, it automatically marks in red. So we've just done all the facials of the maxillary. Now we're going to go to the linguals, and we're just gonna go straight up to the top. And then we're gonna start with number 18 because 17 was missing. So now it's eight, four, seven, three, two, three, three, two, three. See how it skipped over 20, cause it's missing. So now we're on number 22, two, one, two, 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 two, one, two. We are on number five. My apologies, number twenty eight. Three, two, three, three, two, three. Again, it skipped over it because when the hygienist is, or the doctor is doing the probing and you're just charting the numbers for them, you're already gonna mark the missing teeth so that it doesn't even go over them. Whether you're doing it on paper charting or the computer, if you're doing it on paper charting, you would put an X through the teeth so you know to skip right over it. Other things that there are to note that if there is mobility, meaning the tooth is mobile, moves back and forth, it's usually a class one, two, or three. You will mark that, and that will mark it down here. Um, if there's a lot of plaque around an area, the doctor might have you write it. 
um, bleeding upon probing. That's when they put the probe into that pocket and there's bleeding coming out. Again, it would be a red circle and you would click on whatever area it is and put that. Um, with mobility, it would just put the class one, two, or three, which you can see from the information we gave you. One is a slight mobility. They're literally calling off numbers to you, which are the pocket depths. One to three millimeters is an average normal pocket depth. Anything above four millimeters in reading indicates there's some kind of condition going on of bone loss. So typically once a year they do periodontal probing. Again, the doctor or the hygienist is the only one that does that, but they will call you in to write down these periodontal numbers for them because you can see that it would be very hard for them to be probing six numbers per tooth and stopping to enter this in the computer. So the assistants a lot of times will doing will be doing the periodontal probing. So you literally just follow the numbers. They're gonna go all the way across the facial, and then they're gonna go across the lingual of the maxillary, and then the same thing on the mandibular. So you're just literally writing down the numbers three per tooth on the facial side and three per tooth on the lingual side.